Margaret Anne Johnson was born on 4th April 1928 in St. Louis, Missouri. The second child of Bailey Johnson, a doorman and marine dietitian, and Vivian Baxter Johnson, a nurse and car dealer. Angelou's older brother, Bailey Jr., nicknamed Margaret, Maya. At age three, Maya's parents ended their calamitous marriage and her father moved them to Stamps to stay with their grandmother, Annie Henderson, in Arkansas. During the Great Depression and World War II, Angelou's grandmother prospered financially in an astonishing exception to the harsh economies of the African Americans of the day because the general store she operated offered essential basic commodities. Four years later, Bailey, Maya's father, came to Stamps without notice and returned them to their mother's custody in St. Louis. At age eight, Maya was sexually assaulted and raped by her mother's boyfriend, a guy called Freeman. She told her brother, who told the rest of the family, Freeman was ruled guilty and was sentenced for only a day. He was assassinated four days after his release, presumably by Maya's uncle. For nearly five years, Angelou went mute, believing she was to blame for the man's death. Little Angelou established her exceptional memory, her passion for books and reading, her capacity to listen and understand the world around her during this time of silence. Shortly after Freeman's murder, Angelou and her brother were returned to their grandmother. Angelou acknowledges Mrs. Bartha Flowers, a teacher and acquaintance of her family, for helping her speak again. Flowers exposed her to writers including Charles Dickens, William Shakespeare, Edgar Allan Poe, Douglas Johnson, and James Weldon Johnson, writers who would influence her life and career, as well as black female artists including Frances Harper, Anne Spencer, and J.C. Fawcett. When she was 14, Maya and her brother moved in again with their mother, who had since moved to Oakland, California. During the Second World War, Maya attended George Washington High School in San Francisco and took classes in dance and drama at the California Labo School. Around the same time, she became San Francisco's first black female cable car conductor. In 2014, the Conference of Minority Transportation Officials awarded Angelo a Lifetime Achievement Award as part of a session Build Women Who Moved the Nation. At age 17, she gave birth to her son, Clyde, who later changed his name to Guy Johnson, three weeks after completing school. Maya Angelou married Tosh Angelos, a Greek electrician former sailor and aspiring musician in 1951. Despite the opposition of interracial ties at the time and her mother's disapproval. Around this time, she had taken modern dance lessons and encountered dancers and choreographers. Maya, her new husband and her son relocated to New York City to enable her to study African dance with the Trinidadian dancer, Pearl Primus. Still, one year later, they returned to San Francisco. After Maya's marriage came to an end in 1954, she performed professionally in clubs in San Francisco, including the Purple Onion nightclub where she sang and danced calypso music. She then moved to San Diego, worked as a nightclub waitress, fry cook in hamburger joints, dinner cook in Creole restaurants, tangled with drugs and prostitution, taking the paints of cars and danced in a strip club. Ironically, the strip club saved her career. The boarding artist was discovered there by a theater group, Poggy and Bass. In 1957, riding on the success of Calypso, Angelo released her first album, Miss Calypso, which in 1996 was reissued as a CD. She appeared in an off-Broadway review that inspired the 1957 film Calypso Heatwave in which Angelou sang her composition and performed them. In 1959, the singer-writer met novelist John Oliver Killings and at his origin moved to New York to focus on her writing career. She joined the Harlem Writers Guild, where she met several major African-American authors including James Baldwin, John Henry Clark, Rosa Guy, Pearl Marshall, Julian Mayfield, and was first published. 
It was during this time that Angelou had the chance to hear Dr. Martin Luther King speak. Inspired by his message, she resolved to become a part of the civil rights movement. She was given a role for Dr. King's SCLC as the Northern Coordinator. Following Dr. King's work, Angelou moved to Cairo with her son where she wrote for the weekly newspaper, The Arab Observer. She moved to Ghana in West Africa in 1962 and worked as a freelance writer, a feature editor at the African Review and taught at the School of Music and Drama at the University of Ghana. Angelou returned to the United States in 1964 to help Malcolm X establish the African American Unity Organization. Sadly, the organization died too when Malcolm died. Encouraged by James Baldwin and Robert Loomis, an editor, Maya set out to write an autobiography. Initially, she declined the offer but eventually changed her mind and wrote, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings in 1970. The book chronicles Angelou's childhood and ends with her son's birth. It garnered immediate success and was nominated for a National Book Award. I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings is the first of Maya's six autobiographies. It is widely taught in schools, although it has encountered criticism about its depiction of racism, sexual harassment, and crime. Other volumes include Gather Together in My Name 1974, which starts when Maya is 17 and a new mother, Singing and Swinging and Getting Merry Like Christmas, a history of her tour with Poggy and Bess in Europe and Africa. The Heart of a Woman 1981, a summary of Maya's performing and writing career in New York and her advocacy for the civil rights movement. And All God's Children Need Traveling Shoes 1986, which narrates Maya's travel in West Africa and her decision to return without her son to America. It took the literary genius 15 years to write the final volume of her autobiography, A Song Flung Up to Heaven, 2002. The novel spans four years from the time. Angelou returned from Ghana in 1964 to the movement when she sat down at her mother's table and began to write I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings in 1968. Maya Angelou was also a renowned widely read poet and her poetry was mostly praised more for her portrayals of black beauty and power of women and the human spirit condemning the Vietnam War, demanding social justice for all than for her artistic virtue. Yet, Just Give Me a Cool Drink of Water For I Die, published in 1971, was nominated for a 1972 Pulitzer Prize. One of her best-known pieces, On the Pulse of Morning 1993, was written and recited at the inaugural ceremony of President Bill Clinton in January 1993. The occasion marked the first inaugural recitation since 1961 when Robert Frost delivered his poem, The Gift Outright, at John F. Kennedy's inauguration. Angela went on to win a Grammy Award Best Spoken Word Album for the audio version of the poem. As Angelou wrote her autobiographies and poems, she continued her career in film and television. Maya, Hollywood's first black woman director, wrote, produced, directed, and starred in stage, film, and television productions. Some of her works include Georgia, Georgia Three-Way Choice, Sister, Sister Brewster's Place, Blacks, Blues, Blacks, and how to make an American quilt. She helped adapt her novel, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, for a TV film of the same name in 1979. She also wrote and produced many award-winning documentaries, including African American in the Arts, a PBS special, for which she was awarded the Golden Eagle Award. Maya was nominated twice for a Tony Award for acting, once for a Broadway debut, in Look Away 1973 and again for her role in Roots 1977. Angelou made her first film attempt at directing with Down in the Delta in 1998. 
Angelou published several children's books during the early 1990s, including Life Doesn't Frighten Me, 1993, which also featured Jean Michel Barquet's work, My Painted House, My Friendly Chicken and Me, 1994, and Kofi and His Magic, 1996. Both collaborated with photographer Margaret Courtney Clark. Angelou's poetry collection includes Maya Angelou's complete collected poems, 1994, and Phenomenal Woman, 1995, a selection of four poems from a poem originally published in 1978 in Cosmopolitan magazine. The writer has also written occasional poems including A Brave Startling Truth, 1995, commemorating the founding of the United Nations, An Amazing Peace, 2005, a poem written for the tree lighting ceremony at the White House. Angelou has written many essay collections. Wouldn't Take Nothing for My Journey Now, 1993, includes comments and complaints, memories, thoughts and suggestions on matters from faith to jealousy. She published the sister's volume, and the stars look lonesome in 1997. Angelou's poetry often benefited from her performance of it. Angelou would recite her poems before spellbound audiences during her lifetime. In reality, Angelou's poetry can also be traced back to African-American oral traditions such as slave and work songs particularly in using personal narratives and emphasizing individual responses to struggle, oppression, and loss. In addition to exploring individual experiences, Angelou's poems often respond to issues such as race and sex on a broader social and psychological scale. The multi-talented artist served on two presidential commissions in 1975 for Gerald Ford and 1977 for Jimmy Carter. In 2000, President Bill Clinton awarded Angelou the National Medal of Arts. In 2010, President Obama awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civil decoration in the U.S. Before her death, Angelou received more than 50 honorary degrees. Maya Angelou has lectured at many American colleges and universities including the University of California at Los Angeles, the University of Kansas, Wichita State University and California State University at Sacramento. She has been a professor and writer in residence at Wake Forest University in Reynolds. Since the early 1980s, she was awarded the National Medal of Arts by President Clinton in the year 2000 and in 2002, Hallmark launched the Maya Angelou Life Mosaic Collection, a series of greeting cards with her verse. Following a long struggle with respiratory failure, the literary giant died on the morning of 28 May 2014. While Angelou was reportedly in poor health and had recently cancelled scheduled appearances, she was working on another book an autobiography about her encounters with national and world leaders. During her memorial service at Wake Forest University, musicians, entertainers and world leaders like Obama and Bill Clinton paid tributes to Angelou and condolences. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We would like to give you another exciting video for you to enjoy next. Still, before then, our team will be thrilled if you can take this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss other exciting videos like this. Look at your screen now and see two other videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.